Welcome back to the realm of history. Today we're going to be taking a look at chapter 33, section 3, which is going to talk about two major wars, some of which the United States and the Soviets were involved in during the Cold War. And they are the wars in Korea and then also in Vietnam. So let's take a look first at what was going on in Korea. Korea was a divided land at the 38th parallel. Okay, this is a line that divided Korea into north and south. The north was communist and they were supported by the Soviets at the time. And the south was non-communist and supported by Western powers. It all started with a standoff at the 38th parallel. In the year 1950, the North Koreans actually invaded South Korea with Soviet support. South Korea requested United Nations assistance and 15 nations sent troops. The United States famous General Douglas MacArthur was the leader of the United Nations forces against the North Koreans. At this time, the North Koreans controlled most of the peninsula when MacArthur started to make his early moves. Half of the North Korean army, though, surrendered early on and the rest eventually retreated based on MacArthur's strategy. The fighting would continue, though. United Nations troops would push North Koreans almost to the border of China. And then China sent in about 300,000 troops against the UN forces and captured Seoul. MacArthur called for a nuclear attack, which would have been catastrophic, and was then removed from command because of that, uh, what was seen as a pretty outlandish view there. In 1953, a ceasefire was signed and a new border was established at exactly the 38th parallel. We'll take a look at that here real quick. This is uh, North Korea and South Korea. This line right here is the 38th parallel that comes right through this area here. You can see this is the Chinese intervention in October of 1950 uh, right there. And uh, the North Koreans made it all the way down to about this line. Okay, right about this line right here. And then this is eventually where the separation line was drawn. You can see that the 38th parallel comes through this part, but the actual line is right here that separates North and South Korea. Okay, let's talk about what happens after the war. North Korea began to continue with a communist focus, building collective farms, practicing with heavy industry and nuclear weapons, which is an issue in the world today, especially in the relationship with the United States. South Korea eventually established democracy and they grew their economy with US aid and intervention. We'll next switch our focus to war breaking out in Vietnam. We'll talk about how that war sort of came to fruition. One of the big influential figures in the Vietnam War was Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh was a Vietnamese nationalist that eventually became the communist leader. The fighting began in 1954 when the French, who actually controlled this territory as a colony, surrendered to the Vietnamese after a major defeat. This is a worry of the US. It was known as the domino theory. It's a theory that communism would expand in Southeast Asia as more and more countries gathered communism. They believe that that would extend. And so this is one of the reasons why the United States got involved in Vietnam. Now, Vietnam was also a divided country, much like Korea. In an international peace conference at Geneva, they agreed on a divided Vietnam at the 17th parallel. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. But the North was going to be communist, led by Ho Chi Minh, and the South was going to be anti-communist, led by French and United States influence. No Dinh Diem led the anti-communist government in South Vietnam, but there was also a group called the Viet Cong. The Viet Cong were actually from South Vietnam, but they were communist guerrilla fighters, and they were fighting against Diem in the region of South Vietnam. So South Vietnam had to fight both the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese pretty much at the same time. Essentially, as I just said, this war became the South Vietnamese with US and French support versus the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong. Now, we'll take a look here at Roman numeral three about when and how the United States gets involved. In 1964, the United States sent troops to fight the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese. The United States fought a guerrilla war and they were defending the 
DM run group, which was increasingly unpopular as a government system in this region. The Viet Cong eventually gained support from Ho Chi Minh, China, and even the Soviet Union. The United States then, after some time fighting in Vietnam, withdrew. The war grew very unpopular in the United States, and in 1969, President Nixon started to withdraw troops. This movement was known as Vietnamization. It was Nixon's plan to withdraw U.S. troops from war gradually. The last U.S. troops to leave were in 1973, and then once the U.S. were out, South Vietnam was overrun by 1975. Now, we will also take a look at the post-war region of Southeast Asia. We'll talk about Cambodia first. There was something called the Khmer Rouge. These were communist rebels that took control of parts of Cambodia in 1975. They actually were practicing a genocide. They slaughtered two million Cambodians until they were eventually overthrown by Vietnamese leaders. In 1993, Cambodia adopted democracy and held free elections with United Nations help. Take a look specifically at Vietnam after the war. Saigon, the city of Saigon, was renamed Ho Chi Minh City, and Vietnam was united as a communist nation. Around 1.5 million people fled Vietnam, though, because of this, with some settling in the United States and some settling in Canada. In 1995, the United States normalized relations with Vietnam into a much better position. I do want to show you on the map here, uh, that's Korea, but here is a map that shows you Vietnam and some of the major movements in Vietnam. You can see that these are U.S. bombers here. Here's a picture of U.S. troops fighting in Vietnam. This is the line of demarcation in 1954, which would be about the 17th parallel, okay? And so you can see that this is 15 and this is 20. And so that's about where the divider line was. This would be North Vietnam. And then this would, this would be South Vietnam. You have the Saigon government here in the purple. And then you have the yellow is representing the Viet Cong. And then the green is representing areas that they were fighting over. Uh, so you can see that Saigon is down here, was renamed Ho Chi Minh City once Vietnam became a completely communist country. Okay, thank you very much. On to section four next.